Welcome to Bitboy Crypto. This is around the blockchain. We come to you Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today we're talking about Bitcoin dominance. We're talking about Louisiana rejecting BlackRock, and they want to maybe embrace Bitcoin. And also, Board Ape Yacht Club introducing a council. Is this the new DAO? We're going to get right into it. We have Crypto Blood on on the top right. Then on the bottom right, we have Johnny Hopper, always hopping around, keeping it down. And then on the bottom left, of course, we have Crypto Lifer from an undisclosed location. And then on the top left, we have Kelly. He's working from home. I've been in the office all day, Kelly, breathing the dust. Where have you been at? All right. But before we get into the topics, let's look at the crypto market, see where things are going. And it's not really too exciting. We are just up scarcely. We're up 0.13% Ethereum. A little more exciting. It's up slightly over 1%. The price, though, flirting with danger. We have Bitcoin at 20,050. But today we're going to be talking about the dominance. The dominance has hit some new, new lows. It looks like uh, it's about its lowest point in four years earlier. It is up slightly right now. But before, just earlier today, it was down to 39.06%. Now, Lifer, we were talking about the dominance before uh, we went live here. And what is the dominance TA? You actually kind of told me something. When the dominance is something that you can kind of trade, you can trade into some alts because oftentimes, uh, you know, you can see the pump kind of coming. The titan of transitions. So, oh, I'm a little low there, I guess. Whatever. I'm in the new studio. You're short. I You're short. <laughs> I'm a little short. I'm a little short. You got your shorts on? Short. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. I'm you look up, like I'm Luigi up, just up. looking over the top. You go short or hey, you ate a mushroom. Go long. Okay. This is the Bitcoin chart. This is the Bitcoin dominance chart on the weekly. So if you look at it, it came all the way down. Look at one, two, three, kind of quadruple bottom here. Um, showing signs of a big move. Usually when dominance wants to make a move, it says that Bitcoin could make a move. We are curling on the weekly, which is a little crazy, but I'm looking at the four hour for a retest. Why is that? Well, look at the four hour about to pump. And dominance was in a, look at this, an ascending triangle. Oh, yeah, sending triangle bull pennant here. See it? And it broke out and it wants to come and retest and bounce. Bitcoin's doing something a little similar too. So I actually agree with you a little bit. Stable coins coming in, they're taking a lot of market share. People are rushing in and out. And so when dominance loses a little bit, there is a gray area, but it's still such a big metric that you have to listen to it. And you can also make great swing trades, even if it's not going to position you exactly perfectly on maybe a, a macro scale. Like, like right now, this retest is showing that you may not want to trade a BTC pair, right? But when this was hitting a resistance and starting to dump, I mean, you know, that's when you want to trade a BTC pair. The idea is to buy some Bitcoins, I'm not a financial advisor, and then to trade BTC pairs and accumulate Bitcoin in the, in the bear market while everyone's freaking out. And then you end up with more Bitcoin, you end up becoming a better trader, you have skills and you're ready to go. So I don't, I love Bitcoin dominance for that reason. Yeah, the name of that game is uh, Gain More Satoshis. Uh, I always kind of say, you know, that's kind of the second level when you, it's always easy to look at a yeah. coin and fiat value, but when you start looking at it in Satoshis, that kind of mm -hmm. opens up a whole new world of crypto investing. Now, Kelly, he brought up stable coins and, you know, I kind of have a thesis. I think you might disagree with it. I, I say as we move forward and stable coins become a larger slice of this pie, I feel like the dominance is just a metric that is losing validity. It's losing power. It's it's losing uh, informational you know gains that we can get from that metric. How, what do you feel on that? Do you disagree with that? Uh, well, I'm, I understand I understand where you're coming from, but w what I would what I would suggest is that when you have a basically there's the the, the money and you know the 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 currencies and the the liquidity that's moving around all markets is moving between different asset pairs. So if it's moving very heavily into Bitcoin, then at some point it's going to take profits and then move to another asset class. And people that are in in crypto actively involved, most likely if they're if they're investing into Bitcoin, if they're harvesting profits, it's either going to go into stable coins or into alts. Most likely, the majority. But that being said, if the if the dominance of Bitcoin is going down, then that means yes, it could be in stable coins, but it could also be in altcoins. But if it's down, then at some point, the other asset pairs that are up, whether it's altcoins or dry powder, as Will Clemente uh, calls stable coins on the sideline, then at some point that those the, the that uh, liquidity is going to move back either into Bitcoin or into other asset pairs. But what I wanted to, what I would pair that with, you know, when we're looking at the dominance is uh, this chart right here, which is uh, Dylan LeClaire shared this and pointed this out the other day. And I can't believe I had not noticed this, but the the open interest on Bitcoin, look how high this is. It's basically at record record highs 
for how much open interest is on futures for Bitcoin paired with, look at this basically range sideways action that we've been in. So yes, dominance is down, but we're also in a very, very constricted volatility position right now with a huge amount of open interest. Now, I think a lot of people, a lot of different uh, analysts will, will uh, agree with this. There's a huge move coming, whether it's a huge washout whip to the downside or a huge explosion up to, to test that 25K area and above. Either way, there's a lot there, there's a lot of uh, pressure that's being pulled back in that spring that's just been building up. Uh, so regardless of what direction you're trading or if, if, if you're not just DCAing, holding long term, if you are trading, it's very important that you have very tight stops and understand that uh, there's two paths that this could take very uh, ferociously, very quickly here in the any basically imminently. All right. Well, Crypto Bloody, he brought up a good point where a lot of times when people sell into stable coins, it's not like money leaving the system. It, it's still floating around in the crypto ecosystem. But I kind of want to ask you, you know, to guess how, what do the whales do? Because I know a, a guppy like me, I, if I'm trading stable coins, it's, it's to get some small positions on the Ethereum block. I'm, I'm using Binance Chain. I'm using Ethereum. But what about the big whales that are moving 100 million tether, 10 million tether, 5 million tether? On Binance, for instance, you could swap EVM compatible tether for Bitcoin. So I think the, the guppies, I think it's safe to say a lot of times we're just trading Ethereum pairs. We're just trading things on Binance chain, maybe, maybe uh, you know, some other altcoins. But what do you think the big whales do when you see that they have a large position of tether? Are they looking at Bitcoin or are they looking at alts? It's hard to say. I, I don't know. I don't do a lot of chain analysis, so I couldn't tell you. But I think the, you know, looking at Bitcoin's dominance to me, uh, fall is a sign, a signal of a maturing uh, blockchain industry, in my opinion. Um, and so I love seeing this, actually. And I'm not a Bitcoin hater or anything like that. I'm, I mean, I came in the game buying Bitcoin and I still love what it's what it's about. But seeing the dominance uh, go lower means there's going to be less correlation with Bitcoin and the altcoins. And so that's what we need. There are a lot of altcoin projects out there doing great things and adding value to the blockchain world and industry that we shouldn't be penalized because Bitcoin goes up or goes down. It should have it have its own uh, bifurcated or separated uh, ecosystem. Right. So that, that's how I think it should. We should look at this dominance uh, falling. It's a great thing. All right. Good point there. All right, Johnny, I kind of want to ask you something, you know, similar lines here. You know, we have stable coins. A lot of money floating around. It's all on, you know, Ethereum here. But we do have Bitcoin. It's it's still people are speculating if this might be the last cycle where it is dominant. Other people are saying Ethereum is going to shine. It might even take dominance by the next cycle. I want to ask you a question. As more and more stable coins come into Ethereum, what do you think is more likely to happen? Do you think because they're in stable coins, Ethereum has a harder time? Or because the stable coins are on ETH, it has an easier time. All this stable coin, does this make it easier or harder for Ethereum to surpass Bitcoin? Oh, I, you know me, DZ. I'm not the biggest fan of, of stable coins, but we, we've argued a couple times back and forth, and I know that they kind of have a place in this market. I personally think that it's going to make it easier for Ethereum to overtake Bitcoin. Personally, the proof of stake is really the most catalyst is what it's going to do to overtake Bitcoin. And I would have to agree with crypto blood as far as we're in a maturing market, which Bitcoin is gold now. We're not really using it as transactions and all these other art altcoins now are maturing enough to where they're showing some sort of use case to where people feel like, hey, this is less risky. Like I come from a financial background and usually assets that have over a billion dollars in market cap are fairly safe. And if you look down on the majority of coins, you have to go down to like what 50 or 60 to see a coin that has less than a billion dollars in market cap so i do think a lot of people are moving their assets into something less risk versus for reward like maybe less risky or probably a little bit more risky but more rewarding as opposed to bitcoin because for bitcoin to double you're not going to make as much money as if ethereum or said other coin that you could just replace in here so i i do think the flipping is coming and it's going to be important because just like crypto blood said is 
everything won't just follow Bitcoin. Because if you look at the majority of the charts, I'm sure Crypto Lifer can see this. They look, if you have an ascending triangle on Bitcoin, pretty much you probably have one on ADA or some other altcoin. They, but right. I, I will digress. I, I know I'm over the two minutes here. So no, boom, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, the point. Of, you know, you're not going to basically get well in Bitcoin. I, I do agree with that. This is the second time I've quoted him. I'll quote him again uh, this week. Uh, as Crypto Face says, this is his words. You're not going to get rich buying Bitcoin and holding it like an idiot. His words, I, I think they're, uh, they're, no, they're they no. do ring I'll true. You're like going to have to like look it. out. Law, gonna law be of other. large numbers, easy. Law of large numbers. Yes, yes. All right, well, let's move on. And uh, speaking of large numbers, how about that Louisiana purchase? Is that what we're talking about? No, we're talking about Louisiana <laughs> and Bitcoin here. The state of Louisiana, they're pulling... $794 million from BlackRock over its support of ESG principles. I don't know, it's an environmental socialist, uh, social governance, Freudian slip there, social <laughs> governance program. And this is uh, to quote Elon. Uh, here's Elon's thoughts on uh, the ESG movement. He calls it, quote, a scam and a tool weaponized by phony social justice warriors. Uh, that's his, his quote. Now, there's a lot of states that have pulled support from BlackRock. So far, it's Texas, Utah, Arkansas, and West Virginia have pulled and divested from BlackRock, but this is the largest right. by a large amount, $794 million. Now, Lifer, a lot of people are saying, hey, Louisiana, you need to invest in some Bitcoin. A lot of these states, they have state coffers. There's 50. I mean, 51 include Puerto Rico there. If these states make some market purchases of Bitcoin, do you think that's enough to juice the markets? I remember when Do Kwan famously market buying Bitcoin, there was huge pumps. Now, some people are saying it was people copy trading him. Some people saying the liquidity is low enough where if you do buy 10 million, 50 million, it will pump like that. What do you think does happen if they just, if, if it's just 5%, you're looking at $16 million. What would $15, $20 million do if a state did buy Bitcoin? Or could we see a spike from that just from the buying activity alone? Well, thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you for asking me that question. The, you know, I want to go back to what we just talked about, right? The idea that, you know, uh, broadening numbers, macro ideas. Yeah, a lot of these people aren't going to look and speculate on these tiny L coins. But you bet your bottom dollar, these, you know, union funds, pension funds, I believe they're going to slowly start ciphering into Bitcoin. I don't think they're going to have a choice. And I would love to see Louisiana as one of the first person to do it. However, everyone wants to be a pioneer until the boat's on the shore, right? Are they really going to do it? I would like to see if they actually step forward and push. You have both people on either side. What I want to see is I want to have the real debate because this is going to culminate into the real debate whether Bitcoin is environmentally friendly or not. And I believe it's more environmentally friendly than the paper industry, than the oil industry, than, than the even the... Uh, uh, washing machine industry. There's a bunch of industries that are far more wasteful than Bitcoin, yet they're going to try to attack it because it doesn't go with their agenda. Uh, this is going to come to a point at one point, and I think this is where it's heading. I would love to see one of these states jump on and then see other, uh, you know, jump onto that bandwagon. But again, will they do it? Is the question. You know, I like to see the article. It's good. It's good to discuss. But I would like to see some real, uh, you know, a congressman or someone in that state actually take a, uh, a legislative move. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kelly, uh, those who don't know, Kelly used to be a, a rocker. You know, he was a touring band member. And <laughs> still is, on that baby. note, you got to travel all over the globe. Maybe even BJ will pull up one of your old band pictures. Show that picture, okay, Lifer. I, Lifer's not I, as I prefer confusing. not. Uh, I'm going to do a new one to. of my life, maybe. What, what state do you think would be the first to do it and why out of the 50? Well, first things first, based on the same question you asked Lifer, you know, I pulled up the metric because I wanted to get it, get it as exact as possible. A year ago, uh, a, a little over a year ago, May 2021, uh, the market, uh, the yeah, the market cap of Bitcoin was about 1.1 uh, trillion dollars, and at that time, Bank of America put out a report it would take 93 million dollars uh, to move Bitcoin one percent. Okay, and that would be like at a purchase at, at, at one time. Now, of course, that was over a year, a year and a half ago almost. But right now, we're sitting about the same within a small standard deviation of that same amount, right around $1 trillion. So I think this is more of a speculative hopium story than anything else. Do I want states to buy? Absolutely. And is it in their best interest? Absolutely. But it's going to take a lot more 
uh, a lot more sort of conviction and, and uh, I think stability within the market uh, over the next, I would say, three to five years before we really start getting major investment poured in from uh, government uh, bodies, whether it be state, or, uh, local city, or uh, federal. Um, now, what state would it be? I mean, it seems right now, thank you so much for that. Uh, it seems right now uh, <laughs> that it would be something like uh, probably Florida because of the mm. deal with Miami and the Miami coin. Uh, yeah. DeSantis Suarez and, and DeSantis it, could be a good combo there. Or, or uh, what's the, I can't think of the state. Uh, the one, uh, not Wisconsin, Oregon. the one uh, north, Wyoming, northwest. Wyoming, oh, yeah, Wyoming. Or Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming. Because they have so much, they have so much uh, Lummis, mining and stuff Senate. like Bankers that. Hate, but, farmers hate bankers. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Charles yeah. lives yeah. there. And we yeah. have to remember, you know, as, as, as much in the bubble of crypto we're all in right now, like I still, the large majority of people in my life and my family circle uh, are years away from buying crypto themselves, let alone think about mm -hmm. a state like Louisiana or somewhere in the South. The large majority of the populace is going to be. You know, some of them might even still be figuring out how to use a, a smartphone, let alone understand crypto. So it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot of uh, movement uh, and 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 uh, relatability and comfort before these large purchases start happening. So if, if they got if they did a one percent purchase, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be huge. And uh, Kelly, people do want to see the rock star photo. Kelly, uh, plus one Kelly, the rock star. Kelly looks like a bard. Toss a Bitcoin to your witcher. <laughs> And uh, shout out to Sin City Crypto with a $5 super chat. JPEG junkies coming soon to a blockchain near you. Those who don't know, uh, I do have a Cardano NFT project coming out Saturday. JPEG junkies, we got some cool ideas uh, that we'd like to do. You know, just no big deal. I thought I'd throw out a little shout out there. All right, now, Crypto Blood, let's talk about the ESG narrative here real quick. We do have BlackRock. They tangentially invest in Bitcoin. They kind of have their hands in some like Bitcoin adjacent things. They don't own, you know, a Bitcoin wallet with, you know, 100,000 Bitcoin as far as we know of, but they do invest in some of these companies here. Do you think with the ESG narrative, they have to keep these companies at arm's length till the end of time? Man, this ESG stuff is, uh, I don't want to get you guys it's banned. So I'm just going to. Well, if anyone could give that, a lot of criticism but, to it, it is you. It, because of one of the letters. So, I mean, feel a little free to <laughs> express your thoughts. I don't think there's anything weird about that. No, I mean, the ESG thing, as, as Elon mentioned, I think is, is a big sham. Okay, so let's just start there. Um, will Louisiana, will they really benefit from buying Bitcoin in lieu of, you know, this, uh, this BlackRock deal? Probably not. I mean, if you're seeking alpha, you got to, you got to go with someone that you can't just buy one asset, essentially, is what I'm saying. You can't just buy one asset and think you're going to outpace the market. Right. So having some type of grayscale or something that's going to have a basket of assets where you can maybe build some alpha there is, is probably the route to go, not just buy Bitcoin directly and, and solely just Bitcoin. So, you know, they need to do something. Um, I agree with them kicking BlackRock out. Uh, but, you know, I think looking at a basket of cryptos would be a better uh, way to go than just buying Bitcoin. All right. I would definitely agree with that. Now, Johnny, let's, you know, let's talk about these state treasurers. These are the ones in charge of these purse strings. How seriously do you think they consider the idea of having a basket of crypto, a, a, a wallet of Bitcoin? Is this something, you know, maybe on their mind, a 5% probability, 90% probability? You know, what, what, where do you land on the actuality of this happening? It depends on the trend. If they do some statistics and people are into crypto, well, they're going to try to see if they can swing their states to buy more crypto, especially with the midterm elections. You know, like most of our officials are out to buy votes. You know, you're at the lunchroom saying recess for free, right? Everyone gets recess. And, you know, if you look at El Salvador, the pretty much the first person through a door usually gets trampled and they're not doing as well with the Bitcoin that they bought over the summer. And it's just like what Kelly was saying, it's going to take a little while before people start feeling comfortable with buying crypto. I, I definitely think it needs to be more of in pension funds, your 401ks before states are feeling more comfortable with doing that. Because as of right now, it might be shooting them in the foot as far as when it comes to elections, uh, because Bitcoin is still kind of 
term to a lot of people, not, not anybody in this community, but a, a lot of people that you just look on uh, the street, they're like, Hey, are you still invested in crypto? I hear it's going to zero. You know, that's the sentiment that people get. They don't, they I don't understand. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah like, no, why don't you it, take a look it, at Netflix? <laughs> yeah. And that is uh, yeah, the reverse exactly. indicator. Why don't you look at Credit exactly. Swiss Bank? Yeah. There's a yeah, lot of things. You, you could... that easy. All right. Well, let's uh, get to the last topic here. Board Ape Yacht Club just enacted a council. Uh, this is in their words. It's a longstanding, proactive community member uh, that will focus on gathering and curating community feedback and spearhead philanthropic efforts. So they have a little council. It's a council of seven. A lot of people semi-famous in the space, some not so much. And a lot of people are uh, a little upset. Some are kind of happy. Now, Crypto Lifer, this is a lot. This is kind of a new take of having a governance body, you know, kind of help uh, drive uh, NFT in a particular particular direction now a council is a big difference from a DAO, but do you support this idea still even though it's a little some would say less democratic i have a hard time every time we talk about these DAOs, right they're a great example of how we want a decentralized community where everyone has a say and you would uh feel that the majority would you know represent the whole but it it, it, it seems to be that like nodes get more expensive, people that get, you know, start running the actual network and then people that hold most of the voting power really aren't the people that represent the entire community. I've seen that. Right. Uh, so uh, it goes up and it goes back and forth. If it's done right. Yes. But uh, I'm a little outside of the board eight community. You know, I didn't get in early, so I'm kind of outside looking in. I'm not like <laughs> with my board, eight, you know, but, but uh, you know, I just, uh, so when the topic comes up, I'm a little, you know, I always feel a little funny about it. I wish I got my, Made my hundred thousand dollar board ape, but the thing about it is, it depends. I mean, it, it, there's that article to me just generalizes like so much, and there's just so many details that aren't covered. Like you know, like who's spearheading it? Who are the people behind it? What organization voted for it? How many people cared? And you know, is there any form I could read? Is there a Reddit post? Is uh, can I do a deep dive on this? You know, so I just. I don't know. To me, there's just so many unanswered questions. I, I, I'm positive. Hey, I think if, so as well. But, if lifer can't, you know. if lifer can't chart it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Can't chart right, it well, now. Lifer, uh, <laughs> lifer, lifer has a good point there. Yeah, I want to do some NFT TA now. Uh, crypto blood. There, there is a lot of uh, you know criticism about the vetting process and the, the decision making process on how they chose who they chose. Yeah. Do you think they should have been That's more so transparent, fair. or do you think they don't really owe anybody anything here? Well, what, what was so funny, DZ, is that they said they wanted to keep the uh, council autonomous, right? But how are you keeping it autonomous when you pick the council yourself? Like, it just who watches doesn't make the watchman. It's a circle jerk. It, it's a circle jerk. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, nonsense. It, uh, really, what they need to address, the elephant in the room, is what anonymous report they did uh, over a month and a half worth of uh, research on uh, Board Ape and this neo Nazi stuff. So, won't the council should, address that uh, I, I will say this i will I say this you it. should see the counterpoint to that uh to that point you know they do say it's a nazi group but half one founder is jewish another one's like lebanese uh there, there's a lot of there's a lot of liberty and that guy was trying to raise money but there's also a lot of interesting things no in the anonymous documentary. report the anonymous report go check that out okay all right shall do shall do all right now uh moving on here kelly now do you think community engagement and development is this the long-term play that's going to lead to success or a long-term play that thing, you know, is the railroad going to go off the tracks here possibly? I'm going to have to really think carefully about what I want to say here <laughs> because <laughs> the state, the state that our, I don't even want to say world is in. I'll, I'll say the United States with people getting canceled for something they said 15 years ago for books being banned that were written in the 1800s for, you know, somebody being mad because you're, you own a board ape or maybe you're interested in buying it and you don't like how they did the council. I think all this is absolute nonsense. If you don't like something, you don't like how somebody's doing something invest in a different damn asset. That's all I have to say about mm -hmm. that in terms of what is it the right thing or the wrong thing. You have to align with organizations and with projects and with assets that are doing stuff that are within uh, the parameters of stuff that, that, that you set and that you align with. And if things don't, then who cares? There's no hoopla that needs to be made about it. You know, change where you're putting your money, 
organizations have every right to do whatever they want to do, however they want to do it. And when you fall out of line with that or they fall out of line with you, you pick something else. We don't need to critique every single thing, how and why somebody did it and if it was right or wrong. I think it's just I think people people spend too much time trying to figure out why they would have done it better and why that's wrong. Screw all that nonsense. Do you like it? Get it. If you don't, pick something else. All right. Kelly, the dictator. I like it. All right. Now, Johnny, uh, a lot of people are talking about the autonomy here. What, what's your opinion on the autonomy here? Do you think that they were chosen knowing that they'll probably decide how they want them to decide? Or do you really feel like this is a more of a Supreme Court? Like, hey, they're in there and I'm going to do what I want now. I, 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 I see two sides to it. I see that there's a conflict of interest. You know, if, if you're going to have a council, sort of like our government, how they're, they shouldn't be able to vote on things that's going to financially help them. And in this situation, you've got a bunch of board eight yacht owners, you know, that have lots of money. They're probably wanting to potentially make sure that their pockets stay let's let's just say a little bit greener than maybe what would be best for the community of entering more people in because it's a it's a very expensive club to be in like let's look at the name it's board ape yacht club so you have to be a big wig to be a part of it uh, but i do understand that if you're a solo individual you're never going to be able to outsmart a group of people so for that I think it's a good idea to have some sort of advisors to some level. However, it does seem as if we're kind of uh, there. There's a saying originality is just undetected plagiarism. So what our government has done, crypto has tried to change it a little bit. And maybe the board eight Yop club or they're taking away some things that are more centralized and then trying to make it seem not as centralized. But I but, but Johnny, I got a question. Don't they have a DAO? already board yes. eight yeah so what's the point of a council if you got a DAO, they can vote and do i, I just don't understand it man these could, could just, this then be well, just a pr deal where they're trying to just no i think, I think this is just this is more specifically i think for the philanthropic side of it and the DAO would be more the, the organization probably vote for what they want to do yeah right yeah i don't it's, it's a you interesting know point but I yeah I, yeah I, I would agree i think a dow can do all of the charitable work that they would need but yeah who who knows it's gonna be interesting let's uh let's see what this council does let's see what the, uh, the, the elder are the you proud seven of the elders time? yeah man yeah yeah oh you had a watch on oh is that what that beeping was i was wondering what that was all right well that is all we have time for today and it looks like kelly won i think solely off the uh the strength of uh plus 10 points for kelly is that a living room and kitchen in the same spot Plus 10 for efficient home design. So, Kelly, you ended up taking it home. Uh, feel free. Leave us with some parting thoughts, please, sir. Well, you know, again, thank you for having me back. Uh, I've really enjoyed being on the team here with Hit Network and uh, BitBoy. It's uh, been great building with you guys. We've got a lot coming to, to the, the BitLab Academy. Uh, every, everybody here on the stream, definitely go give them a follow. They all put out such great content on their YouTubes, on their Twitters. Uh, and the, the only thing I'll say to wrap up what I was uh, ranting about earlier, uh, what grinds my gears is at the end of the day, let's not just talk and speculate about the things that bother us or that we like. Let's vote with our dollars. That's all that matters in terms of how you really show that you care about something. Let's not just speculate about it. So big love to everybody. Have a wonderful day and a great weekend. All right. And that's all we got time for. Frankie is live in 15 minutes. Make sure you don't miss it. All right, Big Squad. Easy out. Bye, Felicia.